What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So in 2020, one of the things I really wanna do is get back into bass fishing tournaments. And when I was younger, I used to fish a lot of tournaments. I did the junior bass masters, the high school tournaments, as well as the college fishing tournaments. And by the time I was 21, I'd already fished 150 tournaments. And then I stopped fishing tournaments for about four or five years, but now I wanna get back into it. And I really wanna do well when I start fishing them again. And so I wanna actually take some time to analyze what I did well when I was winning fishing tournaments in the past or finishing in like, let's say the top five and figure out the techniques, the baits, the type of fishing I was doing that was the most successful for me in my tournament fishing. And I'm gonna do it the best way I know how, which is using charts and graphs and some analytics to try to determine what factors are going to allow me to be the most successful in fishing tournaments this upcoming year. And so hopefully this will all be helpful for me and also be helpful for you guys as well. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first up, I had to go back in my memory bank and remember all of my top finishes from tournaments over the last 15 years. And so this is 150 tournaments I had to try to remember. And this was a lot easier said than done, but basically what I tried to do was just remember all of my top finishes where I felt like I had a really good performance. And so what this means is when I finished in the top five of a tournament where I had over 100 boats, when I finished in the top three of a tournament where there was 30 plus boats, and then every time I won a tournament and there were less than 30 boats. And I felt like this was fair because, you know, sometimes I would finish second or third in an event, but there'd be 12 boats in the tournament. So that's not really that useful for my purposes here. And my goal is to be fishing a lot of BF fells and larger local tournaments with 100 plus boats. So I wanna make sure that the data I'm analyzing is actually going to be data when I caught good fish. And so I took all this data and I compiled a list of 25 tournaments that I remembered that fell in this criteria. And I listed out some of the things I remember about those tournaments, like the baits I was throwing, the type of fishing I was doing, the amount of weight I caught, the season I was fishing, all kinds of data points. And these aren't perfectly accurate, obviously. I did the best I could. Uh, based on my memory, but I think this is at least good enough for a starting point for me and it should be really useful information for me going forward and hopefully it'll be helpful to you guys too. Okay, so after putting all this data together, the first thing I was the most interested in was to see how many tournaments I had high finishes in when I was fishing shallow versus when I was fishing offshore or deep. And this is something that for me, I feel like is going to be really important because it's going to dictate how I prepare for tournaments in 2020. And so if we take a look at the results here, you'll see that 76% of my top tournament finishes or when I was fishing shallow or fishing down the bank. And then the other percentages is when I was fishing offshore. And so that is a pretty interesting result because really only about 24% of the time was I catching my fish offshore when I had a high finish. The rest of the time I was just beating the bank fishing shallow. And so this might surprise some of you guys because in a lot of my YouTube videos, I talk a lot about offshore bass fishing and it's something that I feel like is one of my strengths. But at the same time, offshore bass fishing is not very consistent. A lot of times you'll go and you'll crush them out there and you'll catch a lot of good fish, you'll catch a lot of weight and you'll win a lot of tournaments. But then there's a lot of times where you go out there and not catch anything. And so if we take a look at the average weights from when I was fishing offshore versus when I was fishing shallow, you'll see that my average weight for my offshore tournament finishes was 17 pounds, where for my shallow tournaments it was only 14 pounds. And so I definitely was catching more weight when I was fishing offshore, but I was also a lot less consistent with the offshore game than the shallow bite. And so this is something I'm definitely going to have to keep in mind in 2020. My initial thought when I was preparing for these tournaments was, okay, I need to fish offshore as much as possible. Possible. But maybe that's not the case. And maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit as a shallow water fisherman because I did pretty well as a shallow water fisherman back in the day. And so I definitely want to make sure that I keep both the shallow fish and the offshore fish honest when I'm out there on the lake. And hopefully that will help me improve my tournament finishes. 
The next thing I wanted to do was see how I finished in the different types of water clarities. So dirty water, which in my mind is less than two foot of visibility, stained water, which is two to four foot of visibility, and then clear water, which is four feet plus of visibility. And in my area, Northwest Arkansas, I have dirty water lakes, I have clear water lakes, and I have stained water lakes. And so I have all three that I'm gonna be fishing in these tournaments. And so I wanna make sure that I understand which one of those three options suits me the best. And so if we take a look at the results, you can see that in the tournaments that I did well in, 12 of my top finishes came from dirty water, and then seven came from clear water, and six came from the stained water. And so this is, again, very interesting because if you had asked me before I did all these statistics, I would say that my strengths is fishing the stained and clear water, again, because I like fishing offshore. But when you actually take a look at the results, I was doing really well in the dirty water, which kind of lines up with the statistics where I saw that I was doing well fishing shallow. And so I don't know if this is skewed just for the fact that when I first started tournament fishing, I fished shallow predominantly because I wasn't as well versed in offshore fishing. And so I don't know if that kind of skews a little bit or if it's just one of those deals where I found a lot of good fish shallow and I was successful. And I feel like it's kind of a combination of both. I definitely see that I was having more top finishes fishing offshore as I got older and as I was fishing more into my college days, but I still had a lot of good wins fishing up shallow and fishing in six inches to two feet of water as well, all the way up until I stopped fishing tournaments. And so this is again, very interesting and it might change my thought process on whether I should be fishing the dirty water versus the clear and the stained water. So after looking at these two data points, I wanted to see how they work together. And what that means is that I wanted to see how well I did fishing offshore and up shallow when I'm fishing all the different water clarities. And these results blew my mind, guys. <laughs> They're crazy. Let me, let me get into it. So if we take a look at the dirty water results first. You can see that I had three top finishes fishing offshore in dirty water and nine finishes fishing in shallow water. And so this makes sense to me. Usually when I'm fishing in dirty water, I want to fish up shallower, fish in less than three or four feet of water. And so that didn't surprise me too much. What did surprise me though were the clear water results. If you look here, you can see that I had zero top finishes when I was fishing offshore in clear water, but I had seven top finishes when I was fishing shallow in the clear water. This blew my mind, guys, because I feel like I am pretty good at catching fish on clear water lakes offshore. But now thinking back on these results and double checking to make sure that I didn't miss any tournaments, I realized that all the times when I would fish offshore in clear water, I would catch a lot of fish, let's say, you know, a lot of spotted bass or smaller keepers, but I would never get those bigger bites. And there are a couple instances when I'm fishing by myself or just in practice days where I have caught them offshore in that clear water, but usually it is not the case. And so I just think that this is fascinating because my plan is to fish eight tournaments on Beaver Lake this year. And Beaver Lake, for the majority of the lake, is very clear, four feet of visibility and more. And my goal is to try to spend a lot of time fishing offshore in that clear water. But if we take a look at the results, that might be a mistake because it seems like that's not been an effective and, I guess, productive way of fishing tournaments for me over the years. And so it may be something I'm still gonna try, but it's definitely not something I'm going to focus on. And if I do fish in the clear water, I need to fish there when the fish are up shallower. And then if you take a look at the stained water, you can see that the finishes are split 50-50, three offshore, three up shallow. So basically what I'm seeing from these results is that if I'm gonna be fishing offshore, I really need to be focusing on that dirty to stained water. And then really I need to be focusing a lot on the shallow water in general because it seems like it works in all the different water clarities regardless of how I'm fishing. The next thing I wanted to look into was the number of high finishes I had on each type of fishing lure. And this data is going to pair really well with an analysis I did last year of my top fishing lures by season. And if you haven't seen this video, definitely check it out on my channel. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever done. And basically what I did is I took all of my fish catches from my videos over the last year 
and I analyzed them to see how many fish over three pounds, four pounds, and five pounds I caught in each bait, and then I kind of put them in the heat map, and oh, it's just a really cool video. And so I'm gonna try to pair some of those results with the results I found here to kind of see if it makes sense. And so if we take a look at the number of high finishes I had on each bait, you can see that my number one bait for doing well in tournaments is a crankbait, then a jig, an Alabama rig, a jerk bait, a big worm, a buzz bait, and then just kind of tapers off from there. Just a bunch of random baits. And so this lines up actually super well with my results I have from that last analysis because my top two baits from my last video were a crankbait and a jig. And obviously here, my top two baits are crankbait and a jig. And the reason that I throw a crankbait and a jig so much is because I've had so much success catching good fish and catching quality fish to help me do well in tournaments. And if you see my videos, I do throw a lot of different baits. I spend probably equal amount of times fishing crankbaits and jigs as I do any other bait in my arsenal. It's just when the money's on the line that I really wanna start doing well, it seems like the crankbait and the jig always help me put fish in the boat. And so it seems like if I'm going to try to do well in tournaments and win some tournaments this year, I need to keep a crankbait and a jig in my hand for the majority of the tournaments and then mix in things like the Alabama rig and the jerk bait. Usually those are better in the winter months. And so this is something that for me is really fascinating just to kind of see how well the data from my YouTube videos correlates with my tournament finishes. And again, you guys are probably gonna say, okay, well this is skewed just because you probably fish a crankbait and a jig more than any other bait, which I would say is the case. I would definitely say that's the case, but I wouldn't say that I am super one dimensional where I just throw those two baits. I would say I throw the jig and the crankbait about 30% of the time combined, and I throw other baits about 70% of the time combined. But what I probably should be doing is going to the jig and crankbait 70% of the time and fishing the other baits 30% of the time, especially if I wanna start doing well in these tournaments. And while we're on the topic of baits, I was kind of interested to see what my average weight was for each of the fishing lures I used in my top finishes. And I basically got these results by just remembering the weights I had in each tournament and then by sorting the average weights of these baits into a chart. And one thing I want to call out is that the sample sizes on these results is not huge. And so for example, you can see my top bait is a frog, which I caught 19 pounds on. And that's an awesome finish but I only have one tournament where I had a top finish with a frog. So this is a one off kind of result. And so this is a little bit skewed and I have fish frogs in our tournaments and not caught enough to get a top finish. And so definitely take these results with kind of a grain of salt as well as all the bait results. But really what I'm seeing is that a frog is a really good bait for me. A tube is a really good bait for me, a big worm, a jig and a crank bait. And then also the chatter bait and the Alabama rig seem to do pretty well for me as well. And then as you can see after that, the weights kind of taper down. And so I don't feel like these results are super useful because there's all their variables that'll go into the average weight that I catch, you know, the lake, time of year, weather conditions, all that kind of stuff. But it, I thought it was just kind of interesting to put up there. So I'm not gonna dig into this data too much, but you know, thought you might get, you guys might be interested in it. So the last data points I wanna analyze are the number of top finishes I had in each season of the year and each month of the year. And these data points by far are the most skewed data that I have just because I fish a lot more tournaments in the spring and in the fall in Arkansas than in the summer and the winter. And so I have a lot more chances to do well in tournaments when they're in the spring and in the fall. And so just wanna call that out because this data may not be super, super helpful, but I feel like it's at least a little bit useful. And so if we kinda of take a look at the results by season first, you can see that my top two seasons are the fall and the pre-spawn. And this makes sense to me actually because both of these times of year are transitional times of the year. The fall the fish are on the move, moving to the backs of the creeks. And in the pre-spawn, the fish, again, are doing that same thing. They're moving into the backs of the creeks. And I feel like I'm really good at finding fish, locating fish, and staying with them as the weather and other factors change the bite. And a lot of these tournaments, I feel like, are tournaments when there's a big cold front that comes through or some sort of event like that where other people aren't able to adapt and I'm able to adapt the conditions. And so that is definitely really interesting results for me because it will give me confidence that if there are some tournaments in the spring and the fall where we get some bad weather coming in or some changes, that I should be able to make the right adjustments and do well in these tournaments. And I'll be walking you guys through the process of how I make these decisions, how I change on the fly in my videos. So hopefully you guys will be really good at it by the end of this year as well. But after that, you can see I do pretty well in the late summer 
summer period, which again is another transition period from the hot, hot weather in the summer to that cooler weather in the fall. And then I don't really do as well in the winter, the spawn, the post spawn, or the summer. And I feel like a lot of times that's because the conditions are a lot more stable in these situations. And also the fish are a lot less likely to move. In the winter, these fish lock down in one place and just stay there. Same thing in the spawn. Fish will be all over the banks of shallow and the post spawn. In the summer, again, a lot of guys can do well in the summer because they can find one school of fish and sit on that school for a month and it won't move. And so for me, I'm better when those fish are on the move transitioning than when they're sitting in one area and they'll be there for you know two, three, four weeks or even a couple months. And so those are results from the season. And then if we break the results down by month, you can see that I do really well in March, in April, and in July. And so March and April, those are really good months for me in the pre-spawn time of the year. And then if you kind of take a look at a lot of my other results, I do well in October, September, November. Those are the fall kind of period. And then I mix it up a little bit with the other times of the year here, but basically they line up with the season of the year I was talking about earlier, nothing groundbreaking here. So that's it for this analysis, guys. I did have a few other data points that I looked into, but they weren't really that interesting. And so hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. I know I found it really helpful, and I feel like it's going to help me in my preparation for upcoming tournaments in 2020, just because I'll know what was successful in the past and the techniques, the baits, things like that that I should be focusing on going into my tournaments. And for me, I feel like it's really important to pay attention to my past successes and my past failures to improve in life, in fishing, in business, whatever it is. And so I feel like doing these deep dives into your past results is always helpful. And so if you guys do want to take the chance to do this, I would love to hear what your results are, what you learned from doing it for yourself. And you can just comment that down below in the videos or on any of my videos going forward. And I'll definitely read those and be very interested in that. And I also do plan on making a video about my top five tournament fishing mistakes. So I'm not just going to focus on the successes. I'm also going to talk about my failures and things that I should try to avoid in my upcoming tournaments. And so my goal this year is to win one bass fishing tournament. I plan on fishing about 15 tournaments this year and I want to win one of them. So that's only a one in 15 shot to win a tournament. That's going to be pretty tough, but again, that's my goal. And so hoping that we can put, get that goal going and hopefully I can share the entire process and experience with you guys so you can improve along the way with me. So thanks again for checking out this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.